Now I'd like to bring up um, Tony Amiglio. He's the Director of Sales at Worldwide Environmental Products, responsibility for domestic sales across the United States. He also serves as the major national accounts manager as point of contact in business development. Uh, Tony has been with Worldwide Environmental Products for over eight years. He graduated from Loyola, Loyola Marymount University with a degree in international business. Tony. Good afternoon, thank you. Thank you, ETI. Thank you, Charlie, for having me. Um, this is fantastic coming out here to Palm Springs. It actually reminds me of, uh, of home. Let me kind of give you some background on myself um, quickly. I, I actually moved out from Hawaii uh, back in 1989. And I remember watching the news and taking a look at, remember, uh, everybody here probably remembers having smog alerts. And I was like, what are smog alerts? I, you know, coming from Hawaii, we've never had anything like that. The closest thing we had was VOG, VOG alerts, which was volcanic ash. So literally I know that I'd be, you know, in the industry um, of emissions. And this is kind of a funny <laughs> uh, cartoon that uh, just kind of starts it off here. So a little bit about uh, worldwide environmental products. We're actually located um, in Brea, California, um, which is probably about an hour and a half away from here. It's right near Disneyland. Everything is underneath one roof. It's about a 12,000 square foot uh, facility. Uh, this is a little bit of, about also our company history. We started back in 1984 and um, started by two founders. And we're still the same company, um, original owners, and our bread and butter is in the emission industry. And these are just some of the projects that uh, we've been working on, uh, both internationally and domestically. Uh, again, everything is underneath one roof. We've got our service support. We've got um, you know, our technicians uh, live and work in the community. We also have our program developers, program managers, all there underneath one roof. I actually sit in the same office, so everything is funneled under that, that one location. Some of our major accounts that we work with, uh, that um, Worldwide works with, there's a number of them here um, within the emission industry. And just diving right into the current emission program, um, there are about 33 states that actively participate in IM programs, in inspection maintenance program, whether it be safety, registration, or actual emission testing equipment. Uh, majority of the states um, do OBD2 testing only. About four of the states do tailpipe and OBD, um, California being one of them. So it'd be California, um, Texas, Georgia um, are the main states that actually do both tailpipe and OBD2. And as, as you can see, the industry mo is moving towards um, OBD2 testing. If you'd like to more find out more about specific programs within the state, you can go to OBD2, OBD Clearinghouse, and that gives you the specific breakdown um, of each state, um, what they're running, the, the program managers that are in charge of it, and also what kind of testing they're doing within that environment. Um, as you know, with OBD2 testing, all it is is looking for emission problems by monitoring virtually every component that can increase emissions. Um, the average test time is about 15 minutes, and it's done on vehicles 1996 and newer, and those are all fully compliant. Um, what we try to do at uh, Worldwide um, with the is actually find get dig deeper into what's going on um, within the test. Uh, we're actually developing a lot of programs with uh, fingerprint testing with OBD uh, programs, um, finding out exactly different, uh, you know, different types of uh, testing within the, the manufacturers, how they interact, and it also it helps prevent fraud. Um, so we have millions and millions of records that we keep in storage and we compare it um, if there's any type of fraudulent uh, testing that, that occurs. Uh, the current California program, um, it's that obviously run under the uh, California Bar, the Bureau of Automotive Repair. Um, it's actually the longest running IM program um, throughout the nation right now. 
uh, 14 years, so it's actually a little bit outdated, and it's time for a change. There are approximately about 7,600 certified stations within um, California. Um, test only about 2,600, test and repair 4,300, and then gold shield about 700. And again, here in California, we do uh, tailpipe and OBD2 testing. The proposed, proposed California program is uh, the DAD program, and that's the uh, Data Acquisition Device Program. And this program was originally called the, um, the California 20, 2012 program. It was supposed to happen this past year, but because of a number of issues with budgetary constraints here in California, it's just been pushed back. So we're actually still waiting for an actual RFP to, to occur. Uh, but there have been specs that have been put out for the uh, data acquisition device. And the data acquisition device program, um, as far as what I know, what I can report to you um, just from coming, uh, meeting with the bar up in Sacramento and attending a, a number of meetings, uh, estimated implementation, implementation date is either late this year or 2013. Um, you're looking at 2013, actually, I apologize, uh, mid-2013 to 2014 is when it's going to uh, possibly happen. Uh, it's a separate unit, um, and it's going to actually accompany the current uh, dynamometer and the platform. Um, it's going to be a Windows-based 32-bit program, full internet capable, uh, where it talks to an internet cloud. Um, it's going to test all automobile, automobile vehicles 2001 and newer. And then also, again, company vehicles 2,000 and older um, for dyne tests and current uh, platforms. What it basically does, it, it ret ret retrieves the information um, from the OBD2 second generation. So it's, it, it's an enhanced type of OBD2. Um, it actually connects to the bar, and it connects via the bar proprietary developed software. And it's, it's called uh, NJET, the Next Generation Electronic Transmission. And that's all done via the web, via cloud. Um, if you'd like specific specs on this, um, the link is um, here. You can actually see the technical specs on it. So, you know, uh, once we provide that, I guess on, on the Facebook, you can go onto this presentation, click on it, provide you specific de um, uh, information on it. This is one of our units uh, that we're actually getting ready for the bar ninety for the for the. DAD program that's going to accompany it. It's fully going to be uh, Windows 7, um, fully upgraded, CANS capable unit. And that concludes my presentation. If you have if any questions, I'd thank you. Um, they're going to continue bar 97 on older vehicles? Yes. How old does a 286 machine get before you have to throw it away? <laughs> Well, that's, uh, that's the issue that uh, the bar is uh, running into. They're actually suggesting that a lot of the manu or a lot of the garages and people that I see upgrade their computers um, to a more current um, type of computer system so that'd be able to handle it. But that's, that's the problem that we're running into is finding older parts to maintain these computers. And software? Software is, I, as I've said, I've heard that they're saying that's Windows 7 is what they're looking at. No, I mean, for these older ones, uh, Bar 97? Yes, for Bar they're actually looking at uh, for people to upgrade to a Windows, more Windows 7 environment. So actually, they give the, the shops the opportunity to decide whether they want to still continue to do bar, um, vehicles 19, you know, 2000 and older with that fleet, because that fleet's going to start to dwindle tremendously. So they're going to give the shops the onus if, if they still want to continue the program to do those cars to have the, uh, the dyne testing, but they would have to upgrade their computer. And are companies like you actually going back and rewriting BAR 97 software we, to we, Windows that's 7? The, the last unit that I showed you is actually our, our newly updated BAR 97 equipment. Um, we're actually, what we're actually also proposing is that within that piece of equipment itself, if you, if you have it or have upgraded, um, instead of having to buy that separate um, DAD, the data acquisition device, we can actually incorporate that within our unit so that you wouldn't have to buy another piece of software or hardware also. And are, are companies like yours 
going to be obligated to support that old equipment to people who we don't are. want to? Yes, we are. Um, and that's kind of a sticky situation, but yes, we are. We, we have to, we are obligated to <laughs> service all the, the older equipment. And I personally want to apologize to the entire industry for being involved. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> In the original specification. <laughs> Those were gas bottles, right? Those are gas, right, high and lows. <laughs> All right, any other questions? Thank you. Thank you.